Tensions between two Chinese e-commerce giants who are known for selling cheap, really cheap goods. Well, those tensions are rising. Timu is suing Xi'an again, saying the company is using, quote, mafia-style intimidation of suppliers to restrict its expansion in the U.S. Part of the complaint filed in a D.C. federal court last week claims Xi'an would de detain suppliers it thought we're doing business with Timu and uh, threatened to punish them for working with its rival. Xi'an said the lawsuit is without merit. So for more on this, I want to bring in Susan Scafidi. She is the founder and director of Fordham University's Fashion Law Institute. Good to see you. So when I saw this lawsuit pop up, I just thought, man, it's not only a great, it's a great time to talk about Xi'an and Timu and, and just how their businesses run. These two companies have really like popped up and exploded over the last, I don't know, five or, or five 10 years, years yeah, or yeah, so, right? Years, yeah. Xi'an has been around a little bit longer. Timu, I don't know where it came yeah, from, but suddenly, I mean, it's on, it's the, my, all my social, it's like begging me to download this app, right? <laughs> the stuff is insane. Begging you, it I is, it is. It takes a it's lot. like you need to do this. <laughs> For shopping you can with spin her. the wheel and save another 50%. But the, it, the stuff online is insanely cheap. And for people who don't know about Timu, it's almost like Amazon, but imagine like a 90% discount on some of these things, right? So if, before we get into this lawsuit, I want to ask you about the business models for Xi'an and Timu. How are they able to sell us these products so cheap? And <laughs> yeah, it's lovely to see you. And that's a great question. What Xian and Tima would probably say is, well, they identify trends very quickly and they and they send things direct from manufacturer to consumer so they don't pay warehouse fees or additional shipping fees. And, and of course, they, they run on very thin margins. But, but mm -hmm. those are a little critical of Timu and Xian would say, well, yes, but they're also copying and not designing. They're probably engaged in various forms of labor exploitation. Exploitation. And oh, by the way, they have been very, very effectively exploiting a, loop, a loophole in U.S. tariff law to avoid lots of import tariffs. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a good side and a bad side to what we see in their business model. Right. So uh, let's talk about this lawsuit. Uh, how does this new lawsuit filed by Timu build on past legal battles between Timu and Xi'an? And it doesn't, I mean, this China had, this is happening in Chinese courts or is it happening here in the United here, States? Here, D.C. Oh, okay, I was going to say, because mm -hmm. I didn't know that uh, China, you could be that litigious, but I guess here, yeah, yeah this is what, it's our pastime. Mm -hmm. um, so, so how, what, how is this building on what Timu has accused Xi'an of in the past? That's a great question. And of course, they've sued each other overseas as well. But yeah, this is at least the third lawsuit just here in the U.S. And Timu, as you pointed out, has only been doing business in the U.S. for a little over a year, right, since <laughs> September a year ago. So it's a lot of lawsuits in a very short time. And they focused on uh, initially Xi'an accusing Timu of recruiting influencers to say nasty things about Xi'an. And then they moved on to Timu accusing Xi'an of antitrust violations, anti competitive violations, monopolizing the ultra-fast fashion market, um, and also engaged in copyright fraud. And that's what we're really seeing in this case. We're seeing these uh, allegations that, that mention mafia-style behavior a couple of times, trying to threaten suppliers and make and to make sure that Shen suppliers don't also do business with Timu. But the allegations with which the case really leads are copyright allegations. Mm -hmm. uh, the a court case, which is, as you pointed out, in D.C., said that Xi'an has falsely registered a lot of copyrights and is using those false re registrations uh, to, to, to send lots of frivolous claims at, against Timu, demanding that they take down otherwise legitimate products mm. from their listings. Um, so all of that, uh, plus some copying of those game style Wheel of Fortune, get a spin and get a discount right. kinds of, uh, of uh, games that, that Timu has offered. So it's a whole series of allegations that really go to how Xi'an does business um, and claiming that it's that their business is built on 
co um, copying itself, but also fraudulent demands focused specifically on Timu. Right. Um, and that they're trying to take down Timu now that Xi'an has announced that it plans to have an, an IPO, an initial public offer. Well, that's, uh, that's one of the things I was going to bring up is that we called it a Chinese e-commerce company, but very recently, uh, Xi'an is no longer a Chinese company, sort of, because they moved their headquarters to Singapore in an attempt, be, and the and the, the feeling is that they're attempting to they're planning to go public, and so that's part of the reason they did it. Uh, you talked about the import taxes. One of the ways they get around the re the reason they get around it is because they ship directly to consumers. Mm -hmm. So it might take you you know three weeks to get your thirty three cent socks, but there will be no taxes on that. But you mentioned a more disturbing allegation that Timu in particular is having to address. Congressional report released earlier this year found that there was a high risk that Timu was using forced labor from China's uh, Zhang, uh, Xinjiang region. And we're talking about, I believe we're talking about Uyghurs, the possibility of Uyghurs being forced into forced labor. Um, what do we know about Timu's supply chain and, and, and even Xi'an's and whether or not either of these companies have responded to these allegations? Yes, both companies have been accused of using uh, forced labor. Um, the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party more recently uh, has said that Timu basically doesn't police its supply chain at all. Mm. Basically, has boilerplate language in its contract with suppliers. Hey, supplier, promise us that you're not using forced labor. And when the supplier signs off, that's as far as Timu looks. Uh, so there's a lot of concern about that, uh, especially given the history of forced labor around the world. And indeed, in our deep history here in the U.S., it's something that we want to be very careful about. Um, and and the and Congress is just not sure that Timu and Xi'an are taking that seriously. Right. Fascinating. Uh, Susan Scafidi, as always, thank you very much. Really interesting. Pleasure.